Good morning, everyone. So let me repeat it again. Good morning, everyone. I hope everyone's day has started very nice and it's going to be a really good day for all of us. Esteemed members of the steel world, ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to welcome you all. On behalf of Cholakolo Metallurgy, I'd like to salute you all with my respect. So first and foremost, I'd like to thank the organizers for this great organization. I'd like to thank Steel Orbis team for having such a great organization. And also, I'd like to thank our sponsors for supporting the realization of this organization and also our team for turning this atmosphere into a great Cholakolu atmosphere. Thank you very much for your help. Last year, if you remember, we were talking about the same video. We wanted to change it and our friends changed this video. Thank you very much. And this year I have another request and it goes to Steel Orbis team. Please just change the uh, speakers as well because next year before I came, I had looked at what I had mentioned in 2020, 2021, and I said in 2020 for 2021, it could be a year that could be very similar to 2008, uh, but um, you know, everything, my estimations failed. So each and every year we try to make some estimations for this sector, but the world is changing very fast. After I finish my speech, what I say here is not keeping its meaning. So it's a really interesting process that we are going through. Right now, it is impossible to make proper estimations. In the beginning of the year, we developed strategies, but all in all, it's going to be failing so today we make plans but next month next day we have to change that plan so the ones who are in this audience i wish you a big luck because we are unfortunately uh, facing with challenges so we need a good luck yes uh, we have been facing against big challenges last year after pandemic in 2021 we talked about our expectations for 2022 we had big expectations but nobody was imagining that we would be having a war nobody thought that the world would be polarized like that as Vaisal has mentioned a crisis is over another crisis is emerging unfortunately so it's a new period for all of us. We are having new experiences. I wish and I hope that we're not going to have worse experience. Well, on my behalf, I don't want any further experience. Uh, no, unfortunately, it's always the new things. The questions on the exam are from the parts that we had not studied at all. So it's like this crisis are leveling up. In the last five years, we have been challenging against the uh, trade crisis and then there came pandemic. We were recovering our wounds, but now there came Russian and Ukrainian crisis. This war was not something that we had experienced. This was not similar to Iraq or Syrian wars. No, they were not uh, similar. Their impacts are deeper for us and for the world because these two countries are very important for the steel. They were raw material suppliers for Turkey. These two countries are very pivotal, so they make the same importation as exportation as China, especially they comprise of the important part of the vast in, uh, steel production and at the end there came different sanctions and we know that this problem is going to be aggravated and on one side like Mr. Vesar has mentioned Western countries has shown the hypocrisy and at the end there 
became uh, worse problems. In recent periods, in total, 7 million tons of crude raw material and 7 million tons of um, productions uh, were imported from Russian and Ukrainian uh, steel producers. On one side, they were biggest competitors to us. On the other side, they were suppliers to us. We thought that maybe the Western country's situation could open up some space for us, but on the other side, for Russia, Turkey in the past uh, was the biggest market, but right now Turkey became the single market for Russia in the Western borders and they unfortunately just uh, spoiled this domestic market because they were desperate despair uh, because they could not have any other market in the western countries Isal, uh, made criticisms for the other parties but i'm going to make some self criticism for us because yes there are many things going on Everyone is trying to protect themselves. But, but something came to my mind when I was reading this title, New Horizons in Steel Markets. For 17 years, we have been saying horizons. So it was like steel success strategy in the very beginning. But then uh, things changed. Then it was called as survival strategies. Right now, maybe we're going to talking about the new horizons maybe in the future it's going to be like dark horizons yes there are sanctions dangers and some risks but at the end there came another situations for all of us the ones who take these risks into consideration they freeze their relations with other countries and those who have not attached importance to sanctions they also uh, found their ways. It's like gambling here. Let's see who is going to win this game at the end. Well, yes, pandemic and then the war. And we were creating strategies against them. There came energy crisis in natural gas, in coal, in oil, prices decreased and then they increased. So relatively speaking, we thought that we were good in the competition, especially in the crisis. Everybody was shrinking, but we were among the top five countries who were growing. But right now we can't compete with European countries in today's conditions. Well, for a long time, because of the effects and also the inflation input expenditures have increased and they created huge problems for all of us right now we are losing our competition advantage and our exportation is regressing and on the other side there is increase on the importation well it has been stated today first 10 months current deficit is 91 billion dollars so at the end of this year, it's going to be over $100 billion. How is it going to be financed? Well, I don't think that nobody in this country has an idea. I think the biggest threat comes from this competition advantage. We don't have any competitive advantage here. Mr. Ibrahim has asked the question that I wanted to ask. Energy price in the overall the expenditure was like 7%, but right now it's 27%. So the profitability of the sector is very well known to us. In order to have 5% profit, we exert any kind of effort. There is 20% increase on the energy bills. One kilowatt hour was like four to five cents in the past. In the European countries, it was a bit higher, and in some countries, it was way higher than European countries, like Italy and some other countries. But let me give you the numbers. In Turkey, one kilowatt hour price is between 20 to 22 cents. So this number is eight cents in the USA. In Europe, it is changing, it is fluctuating, but there are countries like at the 16 cents level and some countries are about 30 cents 
and on the Far Eastern countries, this figure is around 10 cents. So here, there is huge difference. So 10 cents means a facility with arc furnace might have 50 to 60 dollars of production expense difference. So Turkey is losing its competitive advantage. And in the past, electricity prices were compared to EU countries and we were uh, consoling ourselves. But today we are paying the highest energy tariff in the world. And the worst of all is that we pay the most actually. And in natural gas, this is even worse. But there are two biggest problems for us. So we don't know uh, the tariff of the next month, unfortunately, for the natural gas, because with the recent changes, the first 25 months, uh, th first 25 days of the month is going to be taken as the reference for the next month. So the January tariff is going to be determined with the first 25 days of December. And compared to other industry arms, we pay a higher tariff uh, price. It was in, like this in the past. So the pi uh, price increase for the ones who consume more than 300,000, they are given higher price increase. So other industry sectors are given 50% of price increase, but we were facing with 70% of price increase. So this creates a big problem. I'll just touch upon the competitive advantage again. When there is problems in the competition, then your exportation and importation and production is at stake. So today, metal and petrochemical industry compared to other industrial sectors pay 40% more in natural gas prices. Natural gas and electricity are the biggest input for the expenses in a mill. Unless you know the electricity prices, you can't make any trade. So it's like gambling here, because you don't know. At the end of 2008, in order for uh, a better recovery, the world had a monetary policy and the central uh, bank balance sheets grew by two times. So plenty and cheap money with the war conditions created huge inflation over demand. So European countries are trade partners, but right now demand is at the point of uh, coming to a halt. So it's important for the uh, manufacturing sector as well. It creates huge pressure. And in 2020, pandemic started and these horrible times were happening. But in terms of production, we were going really well. And we became one of those five top countries who were growing. But today, we are giving up very easily, as Mr. Vesad has also mentioned. The big, the, uh, last year, actually, uh, we were being recognized as the largest, uh, Europe's largest, uh, but now we are uh, the 10th in the world, unfortunately. But uh, the seriousness of this matter, we were not able to explain it to the necessary authorities sufficiently. Uh, so we haven't asked any incentive. We haven't received any incentive so far, but for many years indeed, especially in the Western uh, world, continuously in this respect, uh, we were penalized. It was, I mean, the competition, the unfair competition that we faced in order for it to, to be eliminated. We had many requests uh, made to the authority. Um, unfortunately, only a scarce number of our requests were fulfilled. 
And on one hand, we are trying to face with unfair competition. On the other hand, we try to survive and stand on our own, on stand on our own two feet. And we're being treated differently, actually, as if we are we are being punished. Of course, this would all result in results uh, that cannot be compensated, unfortunately, especially in the Western world each year. Each item of steel that we export, we are facing problems. We are being blamed. Uh, even though we're not receiving incentive, we were uh, accused of uh, receiving incentive. We were not doing dumping and we were punished as if we were doing dumping. But now Turkey for the last two, three months, is like uh, become the battle place of the Far East producers. They've got this energy cost advantage in their hand and they also receive support from their governments and they can reduce prices as to their wish. And of course, uh, the Russia, uh, uh, Turkey is the only market remaining in its hands and it, Russia is selling uh, products half the price. Uh, and the governmental support that they receive and also uh, the energy cost advantage that they have. Japanese, China, for instance, uh, they are offering products uh, with a price that they do not offer to any other country in the world, unfortunately. Looking at our own domestic market, uh, I mean, everybody, uh, any ton that they can hurry can come to our marketplace and nobody is giving importance to as to who is playing in this market. Yes, it seems okay for you to buy a product cheap, but at the end of the day, on the other hand, if there is no domestic production or else in a place where there is no domestic production, of course, there cannot be any cheap product at the end of the day. In 2020, in the supply chain, there was a huge destruction and the world took a major lesson out of it. And Turkey, in that respect, uh, has achieved an advantage, has gained an advantage after 2020. So what needs to be done is to continue with this advantage, sustain this advantage. This can only be done by sustaining local production. Uh, if there is no local production in a place where there is no local production, just like Mr. Weysel has mentioned, the local domestic automotive target could also be put into stake, could also fall into stake. And we talked about last year protectivism, for instance, and uh, the green energy advantage of Europe, for instance, last year. But the world is really changing fast, the targets, the agenda, you name it. And we are continue experiencing all these changes and we will continue to do that. So. I talked about uh, cost advantage, energy, but our problems is not only limited to these. Uh, there is this green deal in the European Union, uh, carbon taxation at the borders. We've got homeworks in that respect. I call these homework because we have to work on these and we have to complete our homework. But up till date, I mean, no, uh, despite it being completed, we're continuously only discussing, negotiating, but taking no action. On our side, we still haven't anticipated as to what the implications of this Green Deal will be like on us. But European Union always proves how serious they are. Under Green Transformation, the name Green Transformation, they take this as an opportunity at this very period. First and foremost, the steel sector and all the other sectors, they are restructuring those other sectors. And in this respect, they are uh, started creating major funds, as Lomitalin, or as TSEN, or as Lascripter, for instance, decarbonization. Under the name decarbonization, they are being supported, they are, being bene they are benefiting from funds and they are being restructured. And on the other hand, the United States has come up with 232 tax. And the American steel sector is also restructuring itself with this amendment. Uh, alongside all these developments, Turkey, by expanding cooperation with the European Union, 
and seeking ways to tap into the funds is what Turkey should do. But still, we are, don't have a clear information as to how the regulation would be like. For instance, taxation at the board. European Union has announced a date in that respect about, about this taxation system. We don't have a single bit of progress as a country in terms of regulation and arrangements. So definitely during this transformation period, the government should take certain steps in order to support the companies. And it's impossible for companies to adapt to these changes on their own. Turkish steel industry is highly advantageous. Uh, we've got, uh, we are one of the cleanest steel producers across the world. And we can tap into this potential of ours, but in two areas, we have to work really seriously. The first one is energy, but in energy, uh, a major step has been taken. Uh, so even without seeking any licensing, any new, I mean, uh, uh, renewable energy um, region limitation has been lifted but still uh, people who would like to invest in this area they face major problems but maybe steel industry should be given a priority to because uh, steel is the main input in industry in emission each reduction would directly impact other sectors also another topic to be discussed is raw material actually which is the most sensitive one uh, because this goes the same in Europe and in the United States as well. With the new facilities that are going to become operational, they're going to be based on scrap production processing. So in the mid and long run, we should definitely be tailoring a strategy for ourselves. To reiterate, uh, we should cannot expect this from companies only. It wouldn't be realistic because uh, billion euro companies are being founded by the European Union and the United States for the last four years with their protection walls has uh, allocated a great deal of capital for their own sector and individually it's impossible for us to compete with these phenomena. and Maysal has also underlined that the European community now is with the excuse of waste transportation is going to take another step to prevent the uh, outlet of scrap so that they use it as an input for green transformation in Brussels. Lobbying is uh, being carried out with uh, serious negotiations. As you all know, scrap it was within the scope of the European Steel uh, Society. And uh, it's exports cannot be banned well we don't have a concrete step that which has been taken we should definitely our um, waste disposal regulation should uh, be identical to the european union's one and uh, the rights that we uh, have based on European coal and steel agreements, we should be tapping into them and we should be protecting them. If we do not, we would have a problem in our exports, in our domestic production. Well, uh, last year, actually, we more or less were discussing the same matters. This year, we are discussing the same matters. We're only discussing the problems here, as you all know. But my wish, indeed, is in a short period of time to be discussing concrete steps that we have taken against all these uh, handicaps. And we are ready to work on these matters, to spend our time on these matters and to have a resolution. So looking ahead, we've got a dark, gloomy tunnel ahead of us, which is really challenging. And nobody has an idea as to the length of this tunnel. And um, our competitors are being fully supported by their governmental authorities, but we are being left unprotected. We are put into a disadvantages level uh, situation, and uh, which is going to urge us to pay a high cost for that. Our com the competition is preparing for the future, but if we uh, proceed like this, 
future would be really challenging for us. So now uh, let's leave this gloomy um, spirit aside and let's talk about ourselves. Well, Chulako Lu Metallurgy, uh, we had we are ending the year with uh, promising notes indeed this goes the same for our sector as well uh, but as i have mentioned you before nobody has an idea even putin i am sure as to um how things will unfold in terms of these negative situations conditions and we need to uh, spend an utmost effort in order to survive in these challenging conditions each day we try to adapt ourselves to the challenging conditions changing conditions by making certain plans however twin in uh, i mean Yes, we had a better first half in 2022 compared to 2021. That's why the ending of 2022 is promising. Uh, in the first quarter of 2023, uh, where we are going to be finalizing our investment in order to go up to four and a half million tons of production. But of course, we want to be self adequate. That's why. Of course, not only in terms of production, there are certain uh, qualities, grades. Uh, we would like to produce them, IFPI, for instance, non-rust, for instance, a stainless steel. We would like to produce them in our country. That's why we're making all these investments. Uh, for instance, recently, uh, during the exhibition, the minister um, in, uh, visited our booth and Uh, for the last uh, three years, actually, we have uh, produced a great deal of stainless steel. Uh, we did most of them with swap and some of it with local scrap. And we produced our own stainless steel and we exported all of them to Europe. That's why we're going through an investigation in Europe that 100 million tons of production in the last three years, which is nothing in their overall production, uh, excuse me, consumption. Immediately, they opened up an investigation against us. Others are doing their best in order to protect their uh, sector. They are tapping into all sorts of opportunities. Hopefully, we in our country, we will also uh, protect ourselves. I mean, the government will protect us. Uh, and hear our voice in that respect. Last year, for instance, I saw and um, we're trying to increase our ranking. In the last three years, uh, we are one of the uh, best uh, steel companies. Um, um, we are at the top three, but our policy, of course, is to put our people in the very center and show the utmost uh, delicacy sensitivity to our environment and give the most appropriate quality product to our customers and be a trustworthy supplier and uh, digitalizing all our processes and enjoy the maximum efficiency. That is our target. With my colleagues, I am proud of them. Thanks to my colleagues, actually, I always have a chance to talk about firsts on this podium. This year, um, in terms of cybersecurity, uh, we are going to be the only company, the single first company in the world to receive our certificate, which is thanks to the importance that we attain to digitalization. As a conclusion, the Turkish economy. Of course, uh, we will be contributing to the Turkish economy and its sustainable development if I will be in favor. Thank you so very much for listening to me. Yes, just like Mr. Ur has mentioned, the levels um, uh, level is always increasing, which clearly shows us that the sector is becoming more um, focusing on more on speciality uh, expertise, but uh, uh, also it is also challenging us as well. Any questions? I think that people are overwhelmed with yeah, my gloomy speech, but 
uh, I think that that's why they don't want to ask any questions. Okay, about this crop uh, provision, uh, green uh, deal, for instance, zero carbon target. Um, you mentioned about uh, these in your speech as well. In Europe, for instance, this crop export is being limited. Maybe it is going to be banned. And uh, you, at the final meeting of UREC, I was a speaker there. Uh, I had attended also. And no, uh, all the UREC members said this was a seri serious development for Europe and for the world, of course. So we're talking about a new strategy, but what kind of a strategy should we come up with? You said that the sector on its own cannot mm -hmm. adapt itself to this scrap exports ban, for instance. But what kind of a uh, action should we take in order to improve things? Well, of course, we have to discuss all these and create common solutions. Well. Uh, DRI uh, investments, this is important. For instance, up till date as a market, what we've seen is that the Middle East countries are going to become major competition to us. Yes, they've got a natural gas advantage and they could, concerning cost, could produce it much cheaper. But uh, what I am concerned is your our own position instead of comparing ourselves to the cheapest uh, how much are you below or else above the average is what i'm concerned about our market is europe so when when once we benchmark ourselves against europe yes europe seems to be really advantages but still i mean we also hold an advantage against europe still despite all these matters by the way i don't think that scrap could be banned that much but still if I mean, we shouldn't be giving that excuse uh, uh, to Europe in that respect. If our regulation is fully compliant with the European Union's one, then we could stand against them and we could actually do whatever it takes in order for that ban not to take place. Coming back to your question, well, we know that we need raw material and, um, of course, uh, it is also uh, evident as to how we should be... We, solving this problem drr facilities should be established infrastructure should be prepared if there is pellet needed we should be providing that and for uh, all resources for instance for uh, raw uh, raw material provision for instance chinese for instance they accessed raw uh, ores for instance access opportunities were created for china we should be doing the same this goes the same for natural gas i mean hydrogen for instance is a long-term thing but dri could be thought of as an alternative scrap uh, in our vicinity uh, how can we collect it from the vicinity of our country? We should be concerned, uh, considering that European steel producers, first of all, what they did was that to purchase scrap companies. But uh, we are a scrap uh, consumers, a leading scrap consumer, but we haven't been able to take a step in that respect. We always uh, emphasize that because we lack the culture of not cooperating because we've got problems amongst us because of competition. I think that these are the steps that we should be taking all together. Then other solutions could come into scene by discussing our those solutions, of course. Well, thank you so very much. These two topics are really critical. Any other questions? Well, I kept my speech short in order for in order for you to uh, pose questions, by the way, I am from Azerbaijan. About this DRI, currently in Azerbaijan, we've got an ore mine, and thanks to uh, cheap natural gas, we are ex uh, establishing DRI facility because we've started experiencing scrub problem. So we do believe that this scrub cannot uh, stand up the competition against polymers and uh, Turkey was importing scrap, I guess. So, all in all, metallurgy in Turkey, I mean, if energy prices surge this much and if there is a scrap problem for Turkey, what could be the long term solution for this? And also, what are the opportunities here? For instance, they said that natural gas was discovered in the Black Sea. Is it going to lower the gas prices in Europe? Certain facilities uh, were halted, for instance. Do you have the opportunity to export uh, 
if I have got a problem in my Turkish, I can also switch to English. No, no, I understood you. So you've got or and you've got natural gas. So we can do a joint plan, I guess, as an Azeri Turkish uh, brotherhood, sisterhood, uh, with a brotherhood, sisterhood spirit. What can we do that? Well, uh, of course, Europe creates a synergy. That's why they stand uh, powerful individually. They are not. So many uh, cooperation opportunities could be tapped into. So, uh, yes, Turkey is a producer with major disadvantages because we don't have raw material. Energy is limited. However, in Japan, we've got a similar situation. The uh, energy cost is high there. And in ore, uh, raw material, there is also a shortage. In China, it is a, a similar case. China is talking about green transformation, but the energy infrastructure for this transformation is not sufficient, that is not existent. So first of all, we have to define our current situation and then develop a strategy accordingly. And in that respect, Turkey's situation is not that poor, not that disadvantageous. For instance, uh, America says that, uh, uh, I do production based on 75% scrap, but Turkey is in a better off situation in that respect. If we're going to concentrate on green from now on, I think that what we're advantages is uh, in this realm, and we should be tapping into that potential. Okay, so can I? We have the question here uh, from this uh, Rob. Okay, hi, Mr. Ur. Well. You draw a really pessimistic picture today, yes, because that is the current situation, United States, Europe, Far East, Russia. You said that the, their governments were supporting the sector either visibly or else uh, behind the scenes. Well, total exports, 45% of it is being, of the production is being exported by China and also they are supporting and 27 countries of the European Union, they come together and they find a solution concerning their sector, For you, as you mentioned. So why can't Turkey do that? And how can Turkey do that with subsectors? Because the steel and iron industry has to be supported at least with its subsectors. Uh, this goal, like the, including the automotive construction, uh, manufacturing, for instance, how can this be doable? If China does it, if European Union does it for their sector, what can we do? As I said, uh, we lack the culture of working together. It's a bit problematic. Well, looking at the history of the European Union, I mean, that was their starting point, wasn't it? The steel industry, for instance, they were harshly competing with each other back in time. And then they came around the table in order to uh, find a solution to that. And the European Steel and Coal Society community was established in back in 1952 with an agreement. Those 27 countries are negotiating today accordingly, but we see everybody as a competition to us. And uh, we uh, evaluate our situation by benchmarking ourselves against the competition, and this doesn't solve any problem. Still, is very important, but with our stakeholders, suppliers, or else customers, uh, we cannot come to terms with them, unfortunately, 100%, as if importing cheaply seems to be like a solution for them. And I always point out to the same issue today, uh, the cheap steel that you buy from China and a product that you produce with that cheap steel does, doesn't permit you to uh, compete because the same Chinese actually produce the very same product that you do so with that cheap steel. So in that respect, uh, we should finding ways in order to come up with joint solutions to common problems by coming together, which requires transparency, openness, trustworthiness, whatsoever. We are trying, Turkey tries to strengthen the automotive sector. It sounds nice, pleasant, but 70% of the a uh, car produced here is exported and the value is $20,000 approximately. And uh, 
we the thing the vehicles that we import uh, is double the amount the price uh, of the car being sold back in Europe. So this doesn't seem to be logical. We say that we are manufacturing product a car in Turkey, but we are importing all of the almost all of the raw materials uh, abroad from abroad uh, so that's uh, for instance uh, i haven't seen any german buying the steel from japan and uh, manufacturing uh, a car for instance they would be using their own steel or else at the worst they would buy it from uh, austria they see it as a brother and for instance um, this goes the same for mercedes for instance uh, Well, yes, I think that uh, Farouk is not going to ask a question. Uh, well, um, Mr. Ur, thank you so very much for your quest, uh, for giving me the floor. Uh, my name is Marve. Uh, well, uh, in terms of freight, I would like to uh, receive your comments. Looking at Russia, yes. Uh, the production cost is low, a low price policy is being pursued, but on the other hand, freight cost is high. Uh, many European uh, freight companies do not go to Russian harbors, and some operators have decided not to go beyond the Marmara Sea. Mostly, uh, if there is a position in the Mediterranean Sea, uh, Turkish goods are preferred. And uh, freight companies going to Russia do ask for a really high freight. So freight cost is high for Russia. Turkish steel and iron industry, can uh, can it benefit from this uh, discrepancy? Well, I cannot unfortunately say yes to this question because yes, with freight, uh, there was a considerable decline in the price, but that was because of the shrinkage of the volume of the world trade. But let me just give you another comparison. From here to United States, when we do exports, the freight cost is still 72 to 80 or else even $90. But from China, vessels coming over to Turkey is around about 50 to 60 only. Of course, I mean, uh, uh, the freight uh, and also maritime uh, freight uh, has got different dynamics, but uh, Russia still, no matter what we offer to our domestic customers, it's $100. Uh, they offer a quotation $100 than us, less than us. And uh, they are, uh, they've got a cost advantage. And within the given conditions, they do not mind as to how much they sell their product to. We saw the same case with Iran back in the history. Whenever they are feeling challenged, if there is a challenging condition, uh, I mean, they do not take into account the freight, high freight cost, but what they focus on is to sell their products only, no matter what the price. Okay, so I would like to thank both speakers uh, for their valuable uh, insights evaluations of course i we should not take them as being pessimistic because if you know the reasons to a problem for sure you would also find out the solution well uh, uh, ahead all of the sectors of growth improvements there is this uh, internal processing regime, as you all know, which prevents sectors from developing in our country. This internal processing um, uh, even though it uh, prevents uh, domestic companies from um, actually uh, growing, uh, it is still being implemented. And, uh, well, there was an improvement in inward processing, but how can this be prevented i mean uh, sectors for instance why do don't they eliminate this inward processing regime yes you are very valid in your point uh, mr farouk this inward processing seems to be like a, 
a process which is facilitating what this totally makes us lazy and you see that in the european union's um case as well it's only one or two percent but in turkey it is over 50 percent is inward processing i mean buy it cheaply and then process it simply and then pretend that you're exporting but the value that you add is really minimum so that's why uh, we've got a current deficit of over 90 billion unfortunately but in a car for instance the steel's share or else in white household good it's really minimal so that five percent ten percent of savings is nothing but inside uh, I mean, the risk that it poses is much greater in the beginning of 2020 uh, when we did not actually receive materials from China. The whole uh, European industry uh, was uh, uh, felt that shock, and uh, but we were able to actually uh, compensate our uh, own demand, our request. Uh, so we've got that capacity but the authority should uh, show an assertive will in that respect you think that you are only uh, buying it cheaply for three pennies but for one one and a half years uh, many people are exploiting this because of that regime of course this problem is being uttered time and again but unfortunately again we come to the same point because we don't have a cooperation culture five people we go to ankara we talk about these problems and behind us 50 other people go knock on their door and defend something different and the authority gives importance to uh, the number of opposers more whoever opposes more uh, in numbers the authority takes their view into account not us okay mr ahmed another question so for 2023 what for turkey and the world steel sector what are what would be your forecast like okay so there is the 50 per 50 percent of possibility if your forecast uh, is realized, then you uh, become a person who's got this uh, solid forecast, realistic forecast. If not, then you just fail, which wouldn't be that much of a problem. OK, so we've seen the worst, actually, especially for the, for the Far East producers. They cannot decide that properly because their production is still ongoing in their own region, country. The products that they cannot sell, they have transferred over to these kind of countries like us. But as of the first quarters, uh, they will have to adjust themselves to the new order. And as with the second quarter, I do believe that there is going to be an offset, a balance. Well, uh, of course, in the second quarter, I don't have any forecast because we are going to go into the uh, uh, um, uh, holiday period. And first of all, Christmas and then the Russians, Christmas and then the Chinese holiday. So the second quarter goes. Uh, but uh, in the for the first half of the year, I don't expect much of any, a profitability. Yes, there could be production, but no demand. This inflation is going to pressurize demand, I'm sure. And uh, well, actually, in Europe, uh, when the prices increase, they start defending themselves, their sectors, because they always focus on savings. But in our country, once prices increase, we our demand also increases because we want to buy things as the price increase so that we stay on the safe side and protect ourselves against surging prices. But including the United States nowadays, these interest rate increases, I do they think that it has to slow down because they are aware of the uh, problems in the market, but it, the picture ahead for 2023 does not give us the hints that things will be resolved quite quickly maybe post 2025 things will improve much more thank you so very much mr U. i thank you indeed